RBC, the voice of the voiceless. Welcome to another episode of Straight No Chaser. Unfiltered. A grassroots community talk medium designed to be a voice of the voiceless. Featuring various community members' opinions on spirituality, history, social organization, economic organization, political organization, creative production, and community ethos. Straight No Chaser Unfiltered is produced by the Royal Broadcasting Company, RBC, the voice of the voiceless, Straight No Chaser Unfiltered. And now, here's the host of Straight No Chaser Unfiltered, Gloria Winston. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gloria Winston, and we want to welcome you once again to Straight No Chaser. Our guest this afternoon is one of my favorite people, one of the most hardest working women in Rochester. I first met her when she worked for the former governor, David Patterson. But with no further ado, I'm going to let Lashana tell you about herself. And we want to welcome Lashana Boos to Straight No Chaser. Welcome, Lashana. Thank you, Gloria. <laughs> you thought I forgot about it. Huh? <laughs> I did think you forgot about it. Mm -hmm. So, a little bit about me. Yes. Um, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Lashana Boos, and um, my family and I have been living in Rochester over the last 10 years. I am married now. I know. Yes. <laughs> With three lovely daughters, 15, 13, and uh, 20 months now. Wow. Yeah, so it's, life has been good. Um, Community-wise, you know, I've been working in Rochester um, with so many agencies, I, I won't even take the time to name them all, but most recently my project is with the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, of course, that has been uh, so um, insightful in regards to knowing about um, the different projects and the involvement that is needed as far as the community and what we want to see happening in our neighborhoods. Um, of course, I still am a Girl Scout troop leader. Uh, that is something that I was doing earlier today. And um, a plethora of other boards that I've been on that um, hopefully I'll be able to get out into these neighborhoods and talk about a little bit more. Um, and I'm a proud candidate for city council for the Northwest District here in our city of Rochester. Great, great. That's my district, you know. I know. I'm not objective, but I'm so happy to know that you have thrown your hat in that arena. Because I must tell our listening audience, for the last four years, I've watched from a distance. You all flip that committee and put yourself in position to be a viable candidate. This is your second time. You lost the election the last time by, what, 13 votes, if that? 70. 70 votes, yeah. OK. So how is it looking so far in the Northwest District? I'm very um, excited about this election, this cycle. Um, just being out in the community, not just in the last four years, but just in my totality of being here in Rochester has been a pleasure. Um, just getting folks engaged and, and wanting them to know more about the decisions that are being made in their community, to start developing relationships with leaders who want to be out and engage with them so we can start um, making decisions that will make our community, specifically the Northwest, more vibrant. We know that there's issues that have been plaguing the Northwest as it comes to crime and as it comes to our schools and it, as it comes to issues with jobs. And so those are conversations that um, I have found that my neighbors want to start talking about. Let's, let's really start not, even, not just having conversations, but have leadership in place that want to address these issues. And so I definitely feel that I am um, in a place where people have grown to know me and trust that I am somebody who wants to do the right thing and um, who has a vested interest in the Northwest. That's great. Mm -hmm. Now, you're currently working for the city school district? I do. I work for the city school district uh, full time in their legal department uh, doing contract administration work. And I'm also still teaching at MCC part time uh, in their political science department. So oh, wow. keep wow. my hands busy. I forgot that you were <laughs> professor at MCC. <laughs> So um, tell me what your vision is. I mean, you've, you've kind of mentioned 
what you hope to do when you're elected. I'm not going to say if elected. When you're elected, tell me what your vision is in terms of improving the Northwest. Well, I think the first thing with improving the Northwest has to do with having leadership that's visible. Um, I think that once you have leadership that is visible, you'll have leadership that's accountable. Um, and so when we start talking about accountability, what type of things do you want to hold that person accountable? Which is, you know, ensuring that our that the community is safe. You want to build better police neighborhood relations. Uh, you want to see poverty and those type of issues being addressed which means um, what does that look like? Does that mean pr more programs? Does that mean, you know, renovations? Does that mean, you know, infrastructure issue, excuse me, infrastructure projects and things like that? Um, you also want to see um, people being able to feed their families. So you want to have uh, career opportunities and being able to be a part of the um, solution and bringing viable uh, jobs into the community for, for residents. Now, the Northwest um, kind of enlighten our, our viewers. What area does that kind of encompass in terms of the city? Um, well, the Northwest goes as north as Charlotte. Um, I would say as south as about West Avenue. It, it encompasses some of the Danforth Tower around the 390. Um, as uh, west as Mount Reed and as uh, east as Lake Avenue. So okay. Lake Avenue in there uh, before you get to the bridge. Mm -hmm. So you, normally you're not crossing over the bridge. All right. So obviously you, you get received a designation from the party. Is that correct? Yes. That was, that was such an exciting experience um, being able to go to about five committees, mm -hmm. um, going before them, talking about the issues. Um, telling them why I think I would be um, a, not only a, a great candidate, but a, the best uh, leader for the Northwest. So, um, and it's, it's been great. Um, received a lot of um, encouragement and positive feedback, being able to build new relationship with folks who haven't been able to meet me, uh, bringing my daughters along with me. That's always the most interesting because uh, my youngest, Jayla, is is only 20 months so she steals the show from me <laughs> <laughs> wow now tell me this if um if you had your druthers and i, I know you work for the city school district so mm -hmm. i'm going to tread lightly on this question okay <laughs> what would would you support uh the commissioners being dismantled and mayoral control how do you feel about that issue that seems to be on the table um, I haven't really formally developed a full opinion about mayoral control. And I say that because, um, you know, with the listening sessions that the mayor has done, um, she hasn't come out with a final response in regards to it. And so I would want to know exactly what were her details with that. Do I believe in um, a parent's... Um, a parent's opportunity to choose whatever school they want to go to? Absolutely. Um, any parent who really wants to see their child flourish and be self-sufficient, they want to ensure that their child has uh, an education. Um, and so whatever that means for that parent, they should have the option to choose, whether it's public schools that are under control of a school board and that are thriving, whether they're public schools that are under the control of the mayor and are thriving, or whether it's charter schools and they're thriving, or they're private schools and they're thriving. I think that from a parent's perspective, you just want to know that your child is going to have a sound education um, to do whatever it is to make sure that they're self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Now, I've always believed in politically educating our community because I'm sure that most people don't realize the primary date in New York State has changed mm -hmm. to June. So do you want to help our listening audience understand why it's important to pay attention and how important it's going to be to get out there and vote in June? Oh, this is this election is so important. Um, the date is now Tuesday, June 25th. Um, it definitely is something that all community members should pay attention to, even if you're not registered into a party. I know that some folks um, that I have had conversa conversations with um, aren't registered with a party and things like that. 
Um, but still, it's something that's important because it's going to tell you who's going to be uh, the new leadership in the Rochester community um, because Rochester is a very uh, democratic city. So even if you're not a Democrat, this is definitely something important to you to just pay attention to on who's stepping up to uh, leadership roles here in our city. Do you find yourself educating convicted felons about their rights once they're off paper? A lot of felons don't realize all they have to do is re-register once they have served their time for their parole period. Before even coming into uh, running for office, um, I was already educating folks about politics in Rochester. Um, that's my background. My background is public policy. That's what um, I enjoy doing. And so um, I find all the time that I'm having to educate folks about their rights and uh, voting. Um, so letting folks know what they need to do when they move is another, is another part of uh, the political process. Because when folks move, you need to register at that new address. Um, otherwise, you're going to be going back to wherever the address you're currently at. That's where you'll have to go vote. So um, there's all these small nuances that um, I, it's, it's part of the process. Um, folks need to know what's going on in order to be engaged and involved. So yes. What advice would you give a young person about entering into the political arena that um, has a desire to? And that has a desire to? Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to pull up your sleeves and work. This is not something that's easy and it, it doesn't come overnight. Um, be willing to listen um, because you don't know everything. So. Uh, if you're ready to work and you're ready to listen, you're ready to do politics. You're ready to be engaged. You're ready to uh, make some changes in our community. How did you first start out in politics? Uh, I was working on, whose campaign? It was a local election. I can't even think of, I, I believe it was uh, Assemblyman Gann. I think that was the first campaign I ever worked on and it was, oh my Lord, it was like 80 degrees outside and they're talking about, we need you to go out and collect these signatures. And I'm, I'm like, well, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they give you this clipboard <laughs> with these list of names and you're going out and you are, well, and clipping names and voter registration cards. And you're going out and you're literally asking people to sign a petition to support a potential candidate for office and you're also registering uh, individuals who are not registered to vote or if they have moved or if they're a felon who has completed their sentence. So um, that was probably the first day I knew that this was not an easy job. So when I see folks uh, up there in the legislature or in the assembly or any, any of those political arenas, I knew that day that this is not something that comes easy and, and you have to work if you really want to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly agree. Now, you weren't raised in Rochester. You were raised in Albion. Is that correct? I was raised in Albion. Uh, however, Rochester has become my home. I've made it my home for my, da my daughters and I. Mm -hmm. uh, I came here as a single mother. And like I just said a few minutes ago, I'm, I'm, I'm married as of 2016. And it's, it's, it's our home. It's our home now. And we I'm take pride in it. And I'm sure Mr. Stanford would appreciate hearing his name. <laughs> you're, you're Lashana Booz professionally. Yes, I am. But your husband's name is James Stanford, That correct? is correct. That is my, that's Great. my honey. <laughs> All right. All right. It's nice to hear. You know, some people, young people these days, they don't even think the marital institution exists. <laughs> you know, I'm old school, so I appreciate hearing that. If you hadn't gotten married down south, I probably would have been at the way, <laughs> but eating some cake. <laughs> but it's nice to know that you're happy with yeah. it. Now, you mentioned uh, that you're working in the legal department at the city school district. Mm -hmm. Had you ever considered going to law school? Uh, absolutely. If, if uh, you know, when you're, when you're a single mom and you're finishing degrees and it just feels like it's time to start putting some food on it, some real food on the table, mm -hmm. you know, life course changes. So, you know, right now I've been able to, um, 
I've been able to do more with my degree than I ever could have imagined. I, you know, when you're an attorney, it's a one track thing. Mm -hmm. However, being able to finish my degree in public policy um, has allowed me a number of opportunities because not only am I not just stuck in one course of an occupation, I'm teaching, um, I'm mentoring, you know, and I know those are things you could do as an attorney, um, but those weren't things that I had even thought about. Mm -hmm. So being able to um, graduate and start raising my family and do something that I never thought I would enjoy doing is, has, been a, has been a great journey so far. Great. Well, like I said, I remember when I first met you and you were working for a uh, former governor. Yeah, that too. And uh, you had your hands full then because <laughs> there were a lot of people didn't want to see you there. Right? It was probably some. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it <Yeah>. was. <laughs> you know, you get going in life and you totally forget about it. That one track mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's good to see you. I'm. Um, yeah thankful that you found the time to be with us today. Uh, I will just say, you know, I'm not objective. If anybody deserves that seat in the Northwest, it's you. And I'm going to leave that right there. But could you give us some parting uh, thoughts or some of your wisdom as it relates to things people should be looking at doing in their community collectively? Because you know Rochester is clickish, disjointed, and some more. What would you offer our listening audience in terms of what we need to be doing to make our community a lot better than it is? Um, I would say um, throw out the window any preconceived, uh, preconceived notations that you have about people. I think that you need to really take the time and sit down and talk to folks. And I know that sometimes it's hard because feelings are involved or, you know, a lot of the he said, she said things. But um, I think that's some of the, a lot of the time that gets in the way um, because you think you know something about someone and, and you really don't because you haven't taken the time to get to know someone. And, and I say that because um, growing up in Albion, I've, you know, the transition to living in Rochester, all it took for me is to go outside and start talking to my neighbors, literally. Mm -hmm. And I had the opportunity to just do it, you know. And so every, you know, when the warm, when the weather gets warm, I'm outside. I'm talking to my neighbors. I get to know them, um, and that's how I've en I, that's how I've enjoyed my journey here, in um, being in Rochester. Is because I take the time, and I'll sit down and I'll talk and I'll have conversations, and I'm relating to folks. So they not only um, that they get to know me, I get to know them. And so when we start being able to do those things, um, I think that some of the walls that we have will start coming down. And if not, you know, you can still agree to disagree, right? That's, 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 that's true. This is true. You can agree to disagree, but I think that's definitely the first step in trying to build more cohesive neighborhoods is really get out and, and start learning more about the people around you and the folks that are doing the work on your behalf. And so that's why I take pride in the fact that um, I'm out there in the Northwest community. I'm not just someone that says I want to run and you won't ever see me. You will see me every single, every single day with my girls holding their hands wherever, wherever I go. Um, because again, I, I, another, a second part is I believe in the fact that um, our kids are watching. And so if I'm not going to be conscious about that, and I am very conscious about it because that's why I take them just about anywhere I go. So, um, yeah, let's start talking. Let's start getting to know one another and, and start building. That's interesting. Rochester. It's interesting because you're just talking about going back to the way it was. You know, I'm a product of this city and everybody knew everybody. The neighbors knew each other. Um, we had a time when policemen lived in our neighborhoods. I think that's a big deal that the, the folks need to move back in our neighborhoods, get to know our families. So it's interesting that you're feeling that way because it was that way many moons ago. I'm dating myself, but I'm a proud, proud Rochesterian because there was a time we did have a community. There was a time the city school district was actually teaching our children survival skills. But anyway, 
I hope the next time I call, I see you, I'll be calling you Councilwoman <laughs> Lashana. I have faith that you're going to do it, and you certainly know you have my vote, and I don't care who likes it or doesn't, because we're not governed by the FCC, not here on Straight No Chaser. <laughs> but thank you for stopping by and sharing your wisdom with us. Good luck, and we thank you, listening audience, and we look forward to seeing you again.